Okay, so you can see that you now have a nice way to be able to display dynamically um, this kind of uh, two-dimensional motif uh, modulating through this uh, grid field. And if I modify this at all, if I say, okay, I'd like to have more, if I want to turn off my preview over here, I can turn off the preview so I don't see those. I can turn off my grid if I don't want to see my grid. All right. So this is a real simple way to uh, populate your motif in 2D. Now, if, for instance, you wanted to do the same thing, but instead of using your planar grid, you wanted to do um, your polar grid, well, it's as easy as just grabbing that polar grid. We can just copy that guy and drop him right into here. And we can just replace the inputs here. There we go. Awesome. Right. And it really is um, pretty amazing that um, using paneling tools, you know, you can start to uh, set up these really sophisticated arrays quite fast, um, uh, quite quickly with very low overhead. You notice really all of this stayed the same, and we just uh, modified this right here. And if I change my angle, right, this is going to update for me. Could uh, modify my extents. The spacing. Etc. All right. Well, since that was really quite easy to change the grid, one thing you might consider doing is actually adding in um, a point container here that you could just say input, right, PT grid. You just take your grid and just drop it into there. And you just say share from one location, whichever grid you want. So you could just take and you know on the fly just replace that input and everything will update. Perfect. So let's take a second to answer any questions you might have. I you know it's easy to get up and running with this quite quickly, and so sometimes it can be, uh, can be easy to also forget that uh, some of the fundamental issues of how we're getting uh, to the various steps uh, may be overlooked. Now, this guy right here really represents the paneling process. So any point grid you want coming in um, can drive that paneling process. Well, going back to grid, um, one thing you'll notice is that you do have um, the ability to uh, create a grid from extruding, for instance. Um, if you'd like, you could take a look at um, from the extrude uh, where you – what's the point? Sorry, that's not right. Let me uh, find this guy. There are grids. Um, See, that's your list of points, the direction, the number of points, and the distance. So you could, for instance, if you wanted, um, take a curve and divide it. And you could extrude um, the points from your curve quite easily. So if I you know, just drew a curve real quick, 
you know, we're not going to go over every single grid type that there is, but I do want to show you guys how quick and easy it is to begin to, uh, to make uh, modifications, right? So I could take and set one curve and just pick my curve. It already made a collection of points, and I could just drop them right into there. So now I have points that are moving up. If I wanted, I could say extrude in a different direction. So using a vector, I could say maybe the unit x. Why don't we extrude in the x direction? And if I wanted, I could just replace this right to there. And you can see as easy as that, now I have my, um, my points, or my, rather my grid, um, paneled through here. And everything is going to be quick and responsive um, to the grid, et cetera. So, you know, it's, it's really quite quick. Um, and I would say very intuitive um, to be able to get up and running with the, the whole paneling process. And now we're right back over here to our polar array.